Privacy is something we often give up entirely when we're online and have no control over. Not only that, but we don't always know what's going on within our network, but Glasswire should help us solve just that. Before I start this review, I want to mention that I was contacted by Glasswire Dev and they did send me an elite code so that I could probably review it. This video isn't sponsored though, and I did not receive any monetary value and wasn't endorsed to give a nice review, nor would you ever see that on my channel anyway. So with that over, you're probably wondering what it does. Now Glasswire is a software that allows you to easily understand and manage what's happening between your network and the connected machines. It acts as a snitch allowing you to see all the traffic entering and leaving your system, allowing you to block the connections and more. Again, this is really good if you want to keep tabs on all of your programs and spot what they're doing. Now with that brief description over, in this video I'll be giving you a run on other software as well as its features, my impressions of it and how it's been holding up for my use, as well as what you're used to being pros and cons. Anyway, to start off, there are three parts of Glasswire. You've got the network monitor, which is what you're going to be using mostly, and then there's also threat monitoring and the basic but useful firewall. Now, what you're seeing on screen now is the paid version of Glasswire, but trust me, the free version has a huge amount of these features and it only limits some functionality that most people won't utilize anyway. So with Glasswire open, you'll notice five tabs, and I'll get to those in a minute. We're starting off with Graph. Now, this will tell you in real time all the connections your PC is making to other hosts. If you don't speak gibberish, it basically tells you what applications are sending and receiving data, where the host is located, and how much is outgoing and incoming in terms of bandwidth. Not only that, but if you click on the program active and then click on it again, it will tell you more useful information such as how much is outgoing and incoming, the executable name, so the actual name of the program, its installation directory, version, publisher, and you also have the ability to virus scan it. In general, this is really useful if you download a lot of dodgy stuff where viruses or malware could steal your info. Besides that, you also have a tab which shows you the IP of the host it's connecting to and its recent changes the program has undergone. On the graph, it will also tell you info like the app connecting for the first time, DNS settings change, host file changes, etc. These are all notifications. I have to say the GUI on this is spot on, so huge props to the devs on that. The software looks absolutely stunning and super easy to understand. On the bottom, you do have a time that you can pause at certain points by left clicking and resuming it by right clicking. The timeline is extremely useful and also allows you to keep logs over time, which you can refer back to without clumping up the timeline. And as you'll notice, at the top, you also have it shortened to different segments. You also at the top have the option to set it to apps where you can see the programs connecting in real time and the traffics tab, which is more for people who want to split the connections into different groups. Lastly, if you go up to the top where glass wire is and click on that and scroll down, you have an incognito mode where once enabled it will still show all of the connections, but then when you disable it, the region disappears as if no connections were ever made. In the firewalls tab, you basically see all of your programs as well as being able to see all the hosts connecting to, how much is outgoing and incoming, and a miniature bare bones graph. The main feature of this section is the ability to block and restrict connections for applications. All users have the option to click to block, and this stops all the connections that the application is making. This is really good if you spot a virus or a dodgy program and want to look more into it without turning off your whole internet. Since we've all done this, but unplugging your network cable is a complete pain in the ass. Now, this section, I'm not going to pretend that other softwares don't do this. My main antivirus, Avast, also has this option. Now, the problem is that it takes a lot longer, and if you want to quickly stop connections, then Glasswire does a much better job, not in terms of functionality, but in terms of speed and efficiency. Premium users do have the option to block all or ask to connect. So this might be the option for you if you want to go about your business with your tinfoil hats, but I have to say that functionality in this is great. Next, if we go into the usage tab, you can see what the whole data usage is, as well as total incoming and outgoing bandwidth. As well as that, you have external and local bandwidth with apps, hosts, and traffic types on the side, which we discussed earlier. You can also change the time scale by dragging the slider in from the bottom, or by going to the top right and selecting day, week, month, etc. If you click on the app section, you can see the total bandwidth and data for each application, as well as the host and traffic type. Same goes for the traffic tab. In the center, you do have the option to use a calendar to select a specific region, and in general, there's a lot of tabs to mess around with. So just pick your poise and figure out what works for you. If we head into the network tab, you'll see all the devices connected to the network. If you've got the paid version, you can also see the manufacturer, IP, and MAC address. This is useful in spying unknown devices on your network. And now if you go into the alert section, it documents all the little pop-ups that you get on your desktop or timeline from Glasswire. This is customizable, but I've got mine set to devices join the network. When an application uses the microphone, which is oddly enough more common than you think, idle, where it will tell me what apps access the network while not focusing on Glasswire, application info, first-time connections, DNS settings change, host file change, 
an ARP spoofing to stop attackers from intercepting or modifying internet traffic. It's a lot less confusing than you think. Now, if you go into the settings, you can also monitor the computer's traffic connected to the network remotely. Now, it is off by default, and I have needed to install it on any other machine, but I will do that soon. Setup on this is really simple, and I do recommend looking at Barnacle's tutorial on that, or by looking at the user guide. And it basically says you need to create a remote server, which is as simple as naming it, putting in your computer IP, or your hosting of the PC that is on your network, and a custom password for security. To then view it, you simply allow access on the computer you want to monitor, and that's pretty much it. If you're stuck, just look at the description. And at this point, I'm going to move on to features. Firstly, it's got a visual representation of the network, allowing you to easily monitor all the traffic on your computer. I've mentioned this before, but the GUI is extremely satisfying and looks great in this graph. As well as that, I also allow you to freeze it at a different times so that you can scan over it to see the applications, hosts, and more. It's broken down really well. Another one that I mentioned is internet security. I will say that it's by no means the same standard of malware removal as a vast malwarebytes or anything like that, but it's not trying to be. This software is more targeted at network and seeing communications and traffic that may pass your antiviruses and be invisible to you. This would then allow you to use a more fully fledged antivirus or uninstaller for removal. And with that said, its functionality such as scanning an executable file on request of it appearing on the graph is really sweet. And again, the ability to monitor your own network security through giving a blatant but not intrusive notification is a big plus. Well freaking done. The next feature is what they call Network Time Machine, and these are essentially logs. How far you can go back in time depends on what version you have, i.e. free, basic, pro, or elite, but these logs are awesome, and looking back at previous network communications with incoming and outgoing traffic has now become really easy to monitor. Glasswire also features discrete alerts. This is where you can disable desktop notifications if you find them annoying, and just disable them for a 24 hour period. Instead of notifying you through this, it will still appear on the graph and the alert section, but I personally have desktop ones disabled unless it's really important, but yeah, this is all up to you. And then you have the bandwidth usage monitor. This is what I've covered in the usage tab, but it basically allows you to monitor your bandwidth for each application and host traffic type and all of that jazz. Remote server monitoring will allow you to connect to other computers on the same network meaning that you can monitor their traffic just like your system. This is a huge plus if you're trying to diagnose problems or things of that nature for parents who aren't as tech savvy. Next is the firewall in terms of ask to connect, block all apps, known as lockdown mode, and lastly, a mini graph, which I don't find that useful to be honest, and that's due to not really showing much beside the traffic patterns. Now, one issue I have with the firewall aspect is that the firewall rules aren't permanent. So if you block an app in this, shut down your PC and then turn it back on again, that app will no longer be blocked. It's not a big problem since if you want to block apps permanently, I do use my antivirus firewall and using Glasswire is a much quicker way of actually blocking it so that I can block it properly in my firewall with the time I saved. Now another feature depending on which version you have is the ability to see what apps activate your webcam and or mic. As well as that you have the ability to see who's on your network through the network tab and you also have the ability to change the skins which for me personally I just leave it on default which is good enough and multiple server monitoring. As for what version you should get, now Glasswire does cover this in a diagram, but there are four versions, with one being free, the basic costing $50, pro costing $100, and the elite costing $200, that is at the time I'm making this video. Now imagine it to be like this, with the free you get everything besides several features that are included in the paid versions. These are your ask to connect and block all in the firewall, the mini viewer, webcam and mic detection, network monitoring to see who's on your Wi-Fi slash network, and a much longer graph history and multiple server monitoring. There's also the ability to hide app activity and use different skins. And then when you get into the difference between the paid version to the basic one, it allows you to install it on one PC, compared to the Pros 3 and the Elites 10. Now with the basic, you have a six month history with the Pros being a year and the Elites being unlimited. And lastly, you have remote connections. The basic can do up to three, the Pro can do up to 10, and the Elite can do unlimited. Personally, I think the reason I like this software so much is because it has a very usable and feature-rich free version, meaning anyone can benefit. If you're interested in something like this, then it's much easier to digest and understand than other network sniffers. Also, I find it generally really interesting to see how the PC communicates with other hosts through this, and being able to spot them and check them for viruses is great. Now, does this replace an antivirus like Norton, Avast, or Malwarebytes? No, of course not. But if you use it in conjunction with them, then it's really awesome, gives you much more reward if you need it. Onto the pros and cons. Now for the pros, there's literally a huge list of features that I've already talked about, 
as a friendly and very elegant user interface. You can block connections for certain applications through one click of a button. And notifications are great too, as they show up on the graph and not just that section with the ability to change them for your desktop. They're clear but not obtrusive. And depending on what version you have, you can configure remote server access. Not only that, but security features on this are useful and convenient, such as the ability to scan a program, system file monitoring, and more. It does have a fully fledged free version, which isn't that far behind from the paid models, and logs are nice as well. This is because it gives you the ability to see the traffic over a period of time. The graph and alerts are in real time, so it makes monitoring suspicious programs a lot easier. And whilst it's really simple, it does give more advanced options for people who demand it. In the alert section, idle time is spawned, so well done you guys. You can check all the hosts and programs that it's connected to whilst doing something else. And lastly, it does what it's supposed to and does that extremely well. As for the cons, initially you don't really notice any, but here's what I found. Whilst I wouldn't say that's a big memory hog as it only uses 31 megabytes, which is about the same as having a Razer Synapse, or about half of what the Corsair driver uses. The CPU usage when open is quite a bit. At idle, it's nothing between 0 and 0.1%, but when you actually have it open, it goes up to 5%, which for me would be 60% of a single core in my system. Then again, it does actually fluctuate between 4% or 3%, so it's not that significant. Another one is that a firewall rules are permanent. Whilst this isn't too much of an issue for me, I would like to be able to have the option to either temporarily block it, so until the system restarts, or to permanently do so, until I decide otherwise. This means that if I really needed to, I wouldn't have to go in and create a separate firewall rules in my antivirus. But I still like the firewall in this regardless, it works well, really well in fact. And I wonder if a way to make that happen is to take the host that it's connecting to and just redirect them to nowhere in the host file. Not sure if that would work in the way I implied but this feature would be really nifty. And the ability to block IP addresses would also be great as well. Even if it was until the next system restart, having an option similar to a firewall option but for separate IPs would be super. Another one is, is that the activity logs can't be saved either, whilst I like the log on the graph where you can go back in time and practically check anything, it would be nice to have a certain portion of it exportable into a notepad file. Even if it was just on a weekly basis where it would be able to export the most important logs, so say if you have an app connecting for the first time, or the DNS server settings changed, or the host file was changed, etc. Basically, what's in the alerts tab would also make diagnosing a problem and sending you to ports a lot quicker and easier. And whilst we have the ability to sort most things in Glasswire, I would love to have a feature implemented where you could sort the apps in a firewall like a VAST does. You could have an all section, a section of the currently active and non-active apps, and then user created folders. It would be a nice addition instead of having to find the specific apps in the whole tab. And that's really it. I have to say that this program is awesome, and most of the cons aren't even negatives or things wrong with it, but rather improvements or extra features that would be really impressive if implemented. I have been using this program daily for the past two weeks and I really couldn't fault it. Support was great, it seems that the forums are a great place to be if you have any problems with Glasswire and overall I would highly recommend the software. Even if you don't get a paid version, the free is still great with the ability to monitor and the only thing missing out are a couple of features. Since the free version is ad free as well, I think the only way to support the devs would be to buy one of the paid models so it might be nice to have a donate button on the Glasswire webpage or on the top of the window next to the drop down. Again, I'm super happy with this software, down a link is in the description, and I hope you all have enjoyed this review. If you liked this video and found it helpful, give it a like, and if you didn't, well, give it a dislike. If you're using the software, I'd like to hear what you have to say about it as well. And by the way, I'm going to be taking a bit of a break from the editing series for a bit. Nothing major, I'm still going to be rolling out a video every week, but this is just so you guys know. Thanks for watching, this has been Proto, adios!